Hello, it's been a while. I thought I would make a video to record some poems for my newsletter, which is late going out because the end of May just kind of happened very quickly. So I started drafting this newsletter on the theme of listening and um, attention and focus and uh, listening to the spaces between and um, I'd done a short set of poems at a local um, open mic night earlier in the month so I thought I would repeat those here for you and um, pop it on TikTok as well as send it out in my newsletter. These poems about listening um, I'm referencing um, in my research at the moment uh, and in the newsletter the work of Pauline Oliveros, a composer who did a lot of work um, on what she termed deep listening um, using sound and awareness of, of sound and silence uh, she created in the 70s a whole set of what she called sonic meditations which you can find um, on the internet um, and they are yeah, groups, sort of group improvisational exercises she came up with these um, this set of sonic meditations in a group of women who practiced deep listening together. I shall read you some poems. This first one's called Sound Waves. Let there be quiescence so seashells hear the ocean sing and eyes become wide open mouths. Let hands become signposts that dance just for you. Feel a hush descend, so burst bubbles fill the air, and skies rain words that evaporate on concrete pavements, cleansing language of habits. Clear time of shouting screams, so smears are wiped from your mirrors, and still lakes turn sentences into upside down trees that ripple branches of thought. Allow silence to grow like lichen, spreading slowly over your lips. Let it cover your head so you can listen to the warm rocks of what's really being said. And on the sort of um, spaces sort of between but also around the edges, um, feel like I inhabit quite a liminal sort of existence a lot of the time and um, not in a bad way and quite in, in quite a good way you know there's all the ups and downs but um, it's margins of marginal like the marginal edges of things um, constantly being aware of what's sort of uh, growing wild on the periphery I suppose and um, so nature and Neurodivergence very much relate to that. Um, it's called wild margins. Wild margins are found in forget-me-nots, the places between bleeding of ink on a page, the mixing of colours. Not an edge but a spiral, constantly becoming into and out of itself. The ivy tangled hedge, dandelions in abundance. This is where the skin of me can blur into a hundred different shapes, carving new space within a world aching to remember itself. Hmm. Then on to the relational, um, I suppose, in-betweens, um, and listening, listening to spaces I guess um, it's called there is a field after the roomy um, my neighbour's dog is barking I hope you can't hear it um, there is a field after roomy the much reference line which you know many a lot of people have referenced this line it's not a new idea out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing there is a field I'll meet you there we inhabit a monoculture of growth of intimacy, taught one texture, linear pathways of being, trampled through hegemony, singular planting of the self. 
A relational void is created by this between the world as it is and how I dream it to be. We wander the margins, get caught in undergrowth, search for a place to dig some kind of better hole for ourselves in which to germinate new languages, skin, touch, other, world, beyond the suffocation of labels and names. The ryegrass sways with longing, dances with new edges, hears messages on the wind which tell us there is more than this, alive, breathing, a world full of love, already here. Hmm. Um, I was going to stop there, but maybe I'll go on and read the other three poems. I did this open mic, which weren't strictly about listening, but I suppose they are um, interlude. Very pink today, pinks, oranges themes going on. Um, these are fabulous, look. I picked these up the other day. They're like the most amazing peonies. And they, they smell incredible. So yeah, like pinks and reds. Um, are just everywhere and poppies everyone's like poppies 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 um, I haven't got a point there it's just just a little like just a little moments in between poems so yeah listening um, you like listening to like the real sources of things like Where things and connections and like, um, yeah, I suppose like, yeah, things are really coming from. Like, is it like, are they from like expectations or sort of sort of set conventional ways of doing things? Um, you know, or we sort of you know looking for like particular like set ways of doing things in our lives like without really sort of asking what that's about or you know um and relationships particularly I would say uh so anyway this is source I suppose like listening for a different kind of source Cupid folds himself into corners, tired of piercing hearts, with weapons of the gods designed to dazzle the love-starved. Before she was put to use, Willow knew how to root quickly, crush sewers of man with her inevitable thirst. What if I too could draw up sustenance from within myself, plunge new shoots into living earth? In this version of events, Gods and their golden arrows would be of no use in finding the source of love. Hmm. Oh, um, listening. I suppose like uh, people are always changing, aren't they? And um, and this, this poem is written specifically referring to neurodivergence but actually um, at whatever stage of life li listening to how you are now can be very different like to say you know five or even two or like you know ten however many years ago um, and that in midlife they often becomes very a very different thing so um, this is called Unbound Trying to find new ground, I bind myself to earth, weave shackles of grass, try to become the golden grasses themselves. Their shafts sway with remembrance for so many years of blindness to their potential for difference. It seems I may at last plait these strands of self into something that can hold me. In this form, I reflect on how I may be of use, how my nature may make of me a basket, a vessel, a rope, to climb out of this monoculture of being into the long, free reaches of wind. 
All right, and we'll end still on sort of the relational theme um, with something uh, listening to new possibilities and yeah, and ways of listening to like being yourself as well. It's very, very important. Um, it's called This Love, and it was a sort of a, it was a love letter to um, some water that I like to go while swimming in. This love. The water demands nothing of me, just softly invites my body to participate in a fluidity beyond call and response, uniting gentleness and strength without the pressure of words and another pair of human eyes upon me. How is it that I feel you know me without the verbal conventions of language? It is under such conditions that I can slip gracefully into you, speak through my skin, converse through rippling patterns. I observe that our love is part of an exquisite ecosystem, a self-sustaining web of wonder. What if all relationship felt like this, able to support weight without effort, a dance of resistance and flow? surrendering to the currents, yet able to swim against them. Each time we meet, you show me togetherness without drama, intimacy between molecule and cell, aspects of love unfolding all around me. The wind singing through green woodland, the turquoise lovemaking of dragonflies, witnessing the lack of need to be anything but completely myself. I choose this. Well, that's it for this um, evening of poems and rambling. And hopefully we'll do this again soon. <laughs>